Welcome back, data visualization experts. Today we're going to focus on how to create the data table in Python. This is actually part two of the playlist um, regarding the data table, which focuses on how to create or how to size the different columns in this data table. Um, open this link below the video, and this will show you all the different things we're going to go over. Specifically, we are going to look into the sizing. We already did the drop down inside data table in part one. In this part, we're going to do the sizing. Eventually, we're going to cover all of these features. So just if you haven't, just subscribe below and turn on the notification in your channel for the Charming Data channel for my channel. So every week you'll get notified of a different feature that we that I'm going to give a tutorial on in the dash data table. Dash data table is very cool. You can do many things with it. If you want to learn more about it, just go into this link and see all the different things you can do with it. Okay, so in my code, I pretty much just copy pasted this, all if everything in here, and just put it in my own words and summarized it to try and give you a better explanation, not better, but, but maybe hopefully an easier explanation of the different ways to, to size the columns and the content within the columns in the data table. So the first thing is we're going to create is this, and we're going to do this with this code right here. Make sure you um, uh, click on the video below and open this code, or click on the description below the video, open this code so you can follow along and do everything that I do uh, so it makes it easier to understand. So the first thing you want to do is you want to import these libraries all of these libraries. Um, dash, uh, you should probably have Dash uh, version uh, 1.0 or, or above because that will allow you to uh, um, access many of these uh, features. If you don't, just pip install Dash. with Just use this line to pip install Dash and you'll have it. Okay, so we're going to start the app and uh, the first part is just take all this section right here is just fake data. So just leave it the way it is. This is the data we're going to play around with that comes from the website, the Dash Polly website, because these are different data sets that we're going to use. We're going to use a, a DF long data sets with longer columns or longer text, DF election, and so on and so on. Okay, and now we can start. Now we can go right into the layout and learn uh, how to size the different cells and different columns in Dash data table. All right. This is exciting. I really, really like it. It took me a long time to work on it, but um, now everything is is um, is easier for me to understand, and I hope that you can learn from it as well. So in this case, in this data table, in these examples, I think there's about five, six examples, we're going to use a DF election um, uh, data frame. And so we're reading the records, we're reading the data into the data property of the data table. And the columns, we're going to give it an ID, and we're going to give the columns uh, a name from the DF election columns. So now that we have this, uh, I ran this already without any styling, any sizing, and this is what we get. We get just a normal data table that has a horizontal scroll because these are the sizes of the columns. But let's say I don't want a horizontal scroll. Let's say I want this, the, the column size to fit to the web browser size. Um, so how do I do that? What you want to do is you want to use the overflow cells content into multiple lines. So the content of the cells are going to go into multiple lines if they're too long. So let's see how we do that. Just unhashtag this. I'm saving it. While it's loading, this doesn't end here. This actually ends all the way. This is hashtag out, so you can't, this is not reading anything. It's not reading all of this, but you need this two lines at the bottom. So leave this how it is. And each time we're going to go over something, I'm just going to hash something out and then hash something back in. All right, so this is the first one. And you see that um, there is no horizontal scroll anymore. See, there's nothing here at the bottom. And the lines that were very long, the cells that were very long, are now duplicates, are now like uh, multiple lines in one cell so they can all fit into, into this web browser. Right. The next thing you can do, instead of having, instead of having the lines uh, duplicate themselves or multiple lines, what we could do is we can put uh, ellipses. An ellipsis is right here, these three dots. So instead of having the multiple lines in each cell, 
it will just if it's too long and the web browser is too small it will just create these three dots the ellipsis right and if I make this bigger also an ellipsis right Canada is a very small line a very small cell so it doesn't have any ellipsis but the ones that are too long it will have it okay the next thing we can do with the dash uh, data table is horizontal scroll. We can actually add a horizontal scroll to the data table. But not down here, we'll actually add it to the data table itself. So if you have a big um, web app with a data table tied to a scatter plot or tied to different charts, um, and this is the bottom part of the, of the web app, you can actually have, add a horizontal line to it. You see, so now we have a horizontal line there and we use this code. But let's say you want to have a horizontal line and you want to control the width of the columns. Here, you're actually telling the, the, the data table what's the width of all the columns. This is not column per column. You can only control all the columns at once here with this. You have to put all this, min width, width, and max width. And I think they all have to be the same. And you got to add this white space and height and the overflow scroll. And this will allow you to say that each column is going to be uh, 180 uh, pixels wide. And if need be, then you're going to add a, a horizontal scroll. When I make the web browser bigger, you don't need a horizontal scroll because it fits. But if it, you make it smaller, then you actually need a horizontal. Then it will automatically create a horizontal scroll for you. So those are kind of the cool features. Okay, the next thing you can do is create a horizontal scroll, just like we did, and the column width, just like we did a second ago. But we're going to add ellipsis, right? So we're going to add the ellipsis here, so it doesn't create multiple lines. So if you go here, now you'll see that there's an ellipsis. You see July three dots, Northern New York State three dots. Before you didn't have that. Now you have that, so it makes it makes the cells a little bit smaller because you don't have to go to multiple lines. Uh, sorry, it doesn't make the cells smaller, but it doesn't create multiple lines. It just creates these three dots. Let's go to the next one. Next one is going to show us horizontal scroll by freezing left, left column. So it starts from the left, and you can freeze as many as you want. I'm going to freeze only one. See the digit here is equal to the number of columns fixed, the number of columns frozen. So here I'm going to freeze one column. If I wanted to freeze two or three columns, I will just change this number to two or three. But I'm just freezing one. So you see the date. This is the first column on the left. You see how it's frozen. It's not moving. All the rest are moving. If I put two, this would be frozen as well, and only the rest of the columns would move. Okay. The other thing is to, uh, since we know how to do ellipses, now we can freeze a column and add ellipses to the to the rest of the to the rest of the cells. So you see, I froze this column; and it has now ellipses, and the rest also have ellipses here. We're just combining what we learned at the top. We're combining it with what we're, we're continuously learning. Okay, let's hashtag this out. Now the next thing is going to be how to um, manage individual column width, like the percentages, using percentages. So before we only did um, the whole, all of the uh, table, um, what's going to be the, the column width? And we, I think we put here 100, 180, or a little bit on the top. You can't, that is not, did not allow you to control it individually. This is for all columns. Each one of them was going to be 180. With this, you can actually control each and every column. For this case, we're going to use a different data set. We're going to use a DF and the DF columns. So make sure that you go on top here and you hashtag these out because we're not going to use this anymore. Okay. We're going to use this new data set, the fake one we created, and we're going to control or we're going to fix the data column of um, the date and the region. So they're each going to be 40%, totaling 80%. So now you see that the date and the region are 80% of the browser window, and the rest are the, the 20%. So this is why you see these are a little bit bigger. So this is cool because this is the first time, or this now you have the code to control individual column width. Before, it was for everything, 
a comprehensive column width, but this is individual. Now, you can do that using percentages, or you can do that using pixels. So here's how you do it with pixels. Leave this because we're going to use the same data. And now we're going to do three columns. We're going to do temperature, humidity, and pressure, and we're going to do 230 pixels each. So you see how they're 230 pixels. These are a lot bigger than the left two columns, which we haven't uh, defined with any pixels. Okay, now we're going to use different data to create um, vertical scrolling up down. So we're going to hashtag this out. And this is a styling you want to use to create vertical scrolling. You have a dictionary of max height and the overflow scroll. You can change the height. In this case, you're saying 300 pixels. What this means is that the if the data table has so many rows, that adds up to a thousand pixels or ten thousand pixels the max height is going to be 300 pixels and after 300 pixels it's going to create a, a vertical scroll bar so that's why you have here this is 300 pixels all of this and after 300 it creates this scroll bar we see how these are long lines but because we didn't put ellipsis you can put mo now you have the code to do multiple lines and you know the code to do ellipsis if you want to make this smaller or you can control the width of this column because you also now have the code to control the width of the column. So play around with it. Go into your own computer, go into your own code, and add to this uh, styling, add uh, the width, play around with the width of the column, play around with an ellipsis, or try to add multiple lines if the, if the um, uh, content is too, is too long. Okay, now we're going to learn how to freeze the rows. Before we learn how to freeze columns, now we're going to freeze rows, again, starting from the top. So when we learn how to freeze columns, remember here, we froze it uh, using uh, this information here. But we started from the left. It always starts from the left, from the left column, and as many columns as you want. The, the freezing rows starts from the top. Now, where is it? Here starts from the top from the first row. Um, I think zero means, yeah, zero means the first row. And if you want to freeze more rows, you'll just put one, two, or three. So let's see. And we're adding width. We're adding the width of the style cell that you have to put. This must be set as an explicit fiscal base width. So you have to add it when you do um, rows, when you freeze the rows. And now you see when I scroll down, the first row, which is the header, is frozen. If I wanted to freeze another row, then I would just do, um, let's see what happens here, one. That means I'm going to freeze two rows. I'm going to freeze row zero and row one. So 2013, New York Times, let's see. That should stay there. You see how New York Times and the row, the header, stays, stays the same as well. So you can freeze as many rows as you want. I don't know. I don't think you can choose what rows to freeze. You can just start from the top and go all the way as many rows down as you want. Okay, so that was it. This now you learn all about the sizing of the of the dash data table. Um, don't forget to subscribe because we are going to learn about all the rest of the different components or, or features that we can do with the dash data table. And don't forget to hit the like button so other people also um, uh, see it, uh, share with other people. Um, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you stick around to learn uh, the the next features. Tip of the week. So this week I, I want to take the time to talk about how important it is to, to take a break and spend some time with, with the family, with your pets, with your, with your plants. Um, right now we're going through the, the, through the coronavirus and a lot of us are stuck at home and we can't really leave or stuck in our, in our apartments. And it's, it's hard. I know it's hard to be uh, managing work or managing your, your uh, dash data tables and da uh, data visualizations or anything else while you have your children around or your um, sisters and family and pets it's hard to be uh, managing everything at the same time but but uh, this is a time that might not repeat itself like you might not have an opportunity in the future to to be so much with your with your cats and dogs and birds 
or or uh, husbands and wives and partners and children or your grandparents. So try to make the best of it. I know sometimes it's 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 hard, but I also look at the bright side and try to spend time with uh, with the family as much as you can. Take a break if you're trying to create something in a dash data table and you're frustrated. Take a break, go over to your partner and hug them. Go over to your children and read them a story and then come back to this and, and try this more. But it's important you do try and take breaks and now you have the opportunity to be with, with loved ones. So uh, take advantage of it. All right, folks, thank you for tuning in. Um, I hope to see you uh, next time in the next chapter on the Dash uh, data table, or you can check out the other playlists um, here above me to talk about the different Plotly graphs that we can create or different um, um, uh, Dash interactive graphs that you can create as well. Thank you very much and have a good day.